Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. Well, we're not longer talking about the electric field, we are talking about the capacitor. The usual, a usual application for using the electric field as energy storage. And uh, we want to have a look today how this capacitor is behaving inside a power circuit. Uh, and we're taking a direct current circuit yeah, not alternating current, direct current, DC circuit, and uh, want to have a look at it. Yeah? I've drawn the situation here. Yeah? So we have a capacitor, we have a voltage at the capacitor, we have a current passing through the capacitor, and there is a charge inside, stored inside the capacitor, yeah? because it has a certain capacitance. And we know that the, the charge, Q, equals C times mu. This we this we, we, we derived from, from the electric field yeah? and that's it. Huh? So now yeah, we have a look at a certain situation. Let's say at this situation we are here. We have a certain amount of charge inside, so we have a certain amount of voltage in our uh, at our capacitor. Hmm? Now we are raising the charge here uh, by a little amount. So we're raising here. by a delta Q. Okay. So what we are earning is here we have a delta U. Because we are changing the load, we are changing the voltage. And this is according to this line. And this line does not change. This line is true for all of it, so it must be true also for a bit. So if I'm using here just here this delta Q, it's the same steepness, the same factor between those two. And here we have delta U then. And now let's think what is what is causing this delta Q. Yeah? So we are changing the charge. The charge is changed by the current, by I. Yeah? And because I is going inside this capacitor for a certain amount of time, delta T. That's the, the charge change is the current multiplied by the time which has passed. The current did run into, flow into, go into the capacitor. Yeah? This is the amount of charge which is added to the capacitor. So let's put this in here. So we have I multiplied by delta T equals C multiplied by delta U. Now I divide by delta T, yeah? so we have I equals C multiplied by delta U voltage change divided by time change. So this is the this is how many volts per second we have changed. So how many volts per seconds we have changed multiplied by the capacitance of the capacitor equals the current which is currently running into going into the capacitor. And now we make a so-called infinitesimal transition. This just means it, it sounds difficult, but from from, from our imagination, it's 
rather simple because what we what we think is that we do this delta q, we make this delta q smaller, 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 smaller to tiny, 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 tiny. So we are earning just tiny, 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 tiny delta u's. And if those tiny, 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 tiny is that tiny that I cannot see it anymore, I know it's there, but I cannot see it. So it's it's very small, infinitesimal small, yeah, infinite small, yeah, but there, right from our imagination, it's there, but we cannot see it anymore because it's too small. Then we are not writing this delta here, we are writing a d. Yeah. So. This equation looks like this equation, I equals C multiplied now by a tiny, 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 tiny change divided by, whee, <laughs> divided by the tiny, 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 tiny time it would take to read this change. So now this is not a change, and this is a change rate, okay, rate of change is this. Yeah? This is the change divided by the time it takes by the change and now it's the change rate, the rate of change of the voltage. So if I want to change the voltage by a certain rate, 10 volts per second or whatever, yeah, I need to have this current going into the capacitor. The effect of union is C. Hmm? so-called differential equation here. Yeah. This is how this looks like. Yeah. If, I, if I would write it mathematically correct way, I would say it's I at some point in time tau equals C du from tau Theta. This is how this would look like. Hmm? Right, t u tau doesn't really matter. What if we we have a look at this? Yeah, look look at this. Yeah, we we are now calculating delta u equals, and now I bring this to the other side. So I have one divided by c. And I have I multiplied by delta T. This is my delta Q here. Huh? What is here? This is my delta Q. And I want to have so this these are all all changes. All this is this is the change of of my voltage. Yeah? In the, if, I make, if I make the sum of all changes, so I summarize all the changes, delta u, from zero time uh, to a certain time tau. Uh, all the changes which were there. At the beginning we have zero, uh, and I summarize all the changes, then we have u. Right? Then we have, in, in total, if we add up all noticeable all changes with there were, yeah, I am there where I am now. Yeah. And this equals this one divided by C, I can put in front of the sum, yeah, and also here we summarize from zero to tau. Here we have this current, this current can be dependent on tau uh, multiplied by delta t. Here I'm reaching u at a certain position tau. Uh, because I summarized everything from zero at the beginning of the world <laughs> to a current point in time tau. Uh, so we have here the voltage at the point tau. And here we have then 1 divided by c and the sum from 0 to tau I 
actually should be t here it would be really mathematically correct yeah and now i make the same imagination i let this delta d go very tiny 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 again and i write d t yeah so the only thing i have to do is then it's looking like that then u from, from tau equals 1 divided by c and if i make this infinitesimal transition at the sum i don't use the sum sign i use a big s yeah, that should indicate a sum we integrate this is also called from zero to tau yeah, our current multiplied by those tiny at the current at certain time multiplied by this little tiny change of the time so we are actually here if if we would have a constant current rushing in we would have this summarized up yeah? this 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 plus this plus this plus this plus this all this delta d's this delta d this delta d this delta d and then we are ending up somewhere right? So those two things are the differential equation. of the capacitor we are no longer having some q or something inside we only have i and u uh, so that's sort of the ohm's law of the capacitor uh, this is a differential equation this is mathematically not that easy to handle uh, Usually when we learn this in school, and so is in our school, when we learn about the capacitor, we cannot solve differential equations. That's the mathematical tool set is not yet there. Yeah? Uh, this is a little bit abstract, I know. Yeah? Next time I will uh, talk about, uh, I, I will tell you the solution of this differential equation. Yeah? And uh, you know, we will make a, a capacitor and we put a, a voltage to it and then we charge it. And for this case, I'm telling you the solution of those equations. Yeah? And then we'll see, it's, it's, it's not that difficult to imagine. Yeah? That the math behind is maybe a little bit tricky. Uh, but if you see, if I explain you the solution next time, uh, we, you will see it's not, it's not that that difficult. So next time we are going to talk about how I and U are behaving at a capacitor if we charge or decharge this. Charging and decharging of capacitors. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.